Thanks, Sushil. I think we missed out on uh, recording the most important part of this video. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, th that's what that's what uh, this year has uh, you know made a lot of people feel, isn't it? Uh, it's just some of us want to scream at some point. It's like, oh, what's happening? You know, nobody is able to understand. Uh, <laughs> but that's the thing. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen once again. Um, so I wanted to very briefly talk on uh, the subject of interruption. Um, you know, we, uh, we are not new uh, to being interrupted. We deal with interruption every single day, right? Uh, we like to get things done, work done without being interrupted, isn't it? Yes, no, maybe in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just been three weeks and it feels like I haven't done this in a long time. So, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, interruptions make our day, you know, um, every single day, isn't it? Um, no matter what we do, um, we are in the middle of something, we're getting work done. If you're, if you're a student, whatever it is, right? That's when you will get this call, you know, an important call, respond to this email. I want you to respond to this email right now. Where is the design I asked for, Melky? Amen to that. Where is that video? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's like, hey, you're getting this call. Yeah, answer, answer, you have to speak now. Man, I'm in the middle of a meeting, you know. Um, the interruptions make our day, our lives every single day, uh, like it or not, right? Um, but somehow, uh, and it's just, it's something about it, even with the human civilization, where interruptions sometimes go ahead, uh, they become very disruptive. I think earlier this year, Ravali had, a, uh, had done a session on disruptive Jesus, you know, very, uh, uh, it was a different perspective back then. So, uh, I mean, you look back at the history of human civilization, we see that uh, how many times interruptions have become very disruptive in nature. You know, you can talk about world wars even, you know, and all the invasions that's happened where civilization think, okay, everything is going well. And one day or the next day, you know, another nation is invaded and everything is not just interrupted, but disrupted, right? Um, but, and I want to just touch on the same lines uh, for most of us or if not all of us, most of us this year, uh, the, if there's anything that COVID-19 has done is it definitely has interrupted uh, in, in the way things that we do life, isn't it? Yeah, yes, no, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, in the, it's, it's interrupted in the way we do church. It's interrupted in the way we meet people. Uh, it's interrupted, it's changed the way we go out. Uh, actually, a lot of them, um, say that the impact of it is almost equivalent to the impact that world wars had on people who lived back then you know uh, people who lived back then who survived the world wars one and two uh, usually say i mean they said life is never going to be the same again ever because their lives were not the same after the world world wars one and two right and they were actually comparing the this pandemic to uh, to the world wars it's like and this is quite a significant interruption in, uh, it's quite a historical time in, 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 in a sense that um, talking about history is fine, but going through history is not fine at all. <laughs> uh, I hope you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, we can talk about history and I like history, you know, you can talk about it, but going through history, uh, it's, uh, Sometimes it's nice, but sometimes it's not a very pleasant thing, but it's, what, it's what's happening here. So, um, so a lot of my friends uh, have lost their jobs, families, uh, you know, have lost their loved ones um, due to pandemic COVID. Um, I don't want to go through the numbers. We all know the severities of what it is, but just to see um, in my own life, in my own circle, how to see my friends being affected uh, by the pandemic. Uh, it was just hard and it is still hard because uh, most of them, even now, uh, it, they either have their salaries cut off um, or they do not have a job, the way the salaries are not coming in. Uh, it is still a very dire, dire situation. Uh, it's not very pleasant at all, right? Um, but in all of this, and I don't, I am, well, there are about what, 30 people now, 31 people on this call right now. 
and I'm sure each one of us have been impacted or affected some way or the other by this pandemic. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to leave us at least this session this year with a message of hope, um, you know, how, how Jesus dealt with the, you know, with the interruptions when he was interrupted. So let's get, uh, you know, let's look at a couple of scriptures um, in the, from the Bible. The first thing I want to leave you, uh, with us is um, God has a purpose for interruption. Okay. Uh, I want you to know that God has a purpose for interruption. Okay, um, let's take a look at this. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, um, you can turn into Matthew chapter 9. Um, Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 to 26. Okay, if you're there, I hope you're there. You can Google it. Turn your iPhones, Android phones to Matthew 9, 18 to 26. Okay, so verse 18, while he was sitting, while he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died. Come, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Now we know the story, okay? I'm not going, I'm not going through the scripture to, uh, you know, remind us of the story, but we know what happened. But it's interesting what the way verse 18 starts off with. While he was saying this, what is that this? Jesus was talking in the previous passage. If you look at from verse 14 to verse 17, he's talking about fasting and prayer to his disciples. Okay, are you with me? So that means Jesus was already in the middle of something. Okay, and then he comes in, uh, this man comes and interrupts Jesus. It's like, you know, he's in the middle of something. Jesus, uh, Jesus is now interrupted. Okay, um, verse 19. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples, okay? So now Jesus is on his way to do something that, you know, the thing that this man had asked for. Just then, verse 20, okay? Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch this cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. Now, it's almost like an inception moment that's happening here. There's an interruption within an interruption. So Jesus is talking about fasting prayer to his disciples. He gets interrupted. He gets up, he goes to solve his problem. In the middle, on his way, he gets interrupted again. Um, in another, in another account of the gospel, Jesus actually stops, right? He stops and he turns his leg to look, you know, who touched me? He asks that question. Um, but again, so we know the rest of the story of what happens, okay? So my, what is my point here is, uh, and why am I, how am I using the scripture as, and saying that God has a purpose for interruption, okay? Here Jesus was being interrupted twice um, and so this is just one of the examples, guys. Uh, let's go to another passage in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14, 34 and 36. Okay. Matthew 34, 36 says, When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak and all who touched him were healed. It's very interesting, isn't it? Um, they want, these people wanted to do that because they had heard of this woman who was healed by just touching the hem of his garment. The word had spread Okay, so it's like, see, I mean, God in his own divine will just makes, uses anything uh, to work his way for his glory. Yes, he was interrupted, but then, you know, it's like, hey, he used that interruption 
for something for his kingdom, isn't it? Um, so that's one of the things, guys, okay? God has a purpose for interruption. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll see more about it in, in, in points to come. Um, the second one is God has a plan already in place. Okay, with your mics muted or wherever you are, just say that point out loud. God has a plan already in place. Okay, um, with that, uh, I want us to turn to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Um, it's one of those lovely Psalms. If you haven't read, uh, I encourage you to read it. It talks about an account of, of the relationship between Israel and God, you know, during that whole process. Um, so Psalm 105, verse 16 and 17. It says, he called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. It, again, it's just very briefly putting across the story that we already know. Yeah? Uh, he's talking about Jacob uh, and his family and how Joseph was sold into slavery uh, by his brothers. Um, but here's the thing. A famine had come to that land. When they were, again, they were living life as usual and famine had interrupted their livelihood. There's no food, uh, you know, for them. So, but what I'm saying is that God has all, God already has a plan in place is that God, because of him being God, he knew that this was going to come. And in his grace and his mercy, he had already placed Joseph ahead of them so that these people, when this day came, when the famine came, they know where to go. But Joseph was already there. In other words, a perfect man was already on the throne in Egypt. Okay. Um, in these times of struggle, we, should, we have to know that there is a perfect man already on the throne for us who is full of grace and mercy. He already has a plan for us. Who will not treat us like our sins deserve? Right? Because Joseph did not treat them like their sins deserve. Okay, so God already has a plan in place. He is already in front of us. He is in your tomorrow already. He knows it. And we know when we read that in Jeremiah 29, 11, isn't it? Um, and, and with that, I want to go ahead uh, uh, and say, he just doesn't have a plan. And, and the plan, his plan is redemption. God redeems everything we go through. It was one of the loveliest things about God and about his nature and about his character is that he's our redeemer. He redeems us. Okay, we see that time and time again. I mean, God created Adam and Eve. Boom. Sin interrupts everything. It seems like all of God's plan was just disrupted. Everything is, it seems like that. But immediately what was this? The move? He already has a plan in mind, and his plan was redemption. Yeah, amen. Um, this is another, you know, quick verse, scriptures that I'd like us to turn our attention to is Psalm 90. Um, psalm 90 is a, is a psalm of Moses. It's one of the most significant psalms you'll ever read. Um, I'll just read a couple of scriptures for us, okay, uh, from verse 12. But I want you to pay attention to verse 15. That's the highlight of this passage. Uh, verse 12, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Verse 15, okay. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years we have seen trouble. In other words, it says, this rejoice, in a, uh, the translation says, be glad or rejoice, joy, okay? That is a sign, an expression of worship, is that there is a direct correlation to what we go through in adversity, okay? There is a direct correlation to what we go through in adversity and what we experience in worship. Okay, he's here, verse 15. I would encourage you to just, you know, take time off and meditate on verse 15. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this for long, for time reason. Because, I mean, you can actually spend hours on just meditating, studying the verse. 
of them is that he redeems everything for as long as we were afflicted for this for the time that we you know uh, we felt that we were afflicted because of whatever is happening right now in the world and uh, whatever you're going through he says you know the days will come where you will be glad you will rejoice uh, you will be joyful again you will lift up a shout yeah and so he redeems us and and god's god's redeeming plan was the cross sin can come and interrupt us but then he already had a plan in place and this plan was redemption um and in the last point that i would like to uh, leave us with is god will put on us more than we can bear okay yeah that is not a typo uh yeah you know you've heard this saying hey god will not you know put on you more than you can bear man so but i think that's a misinterpretation of um, this verse in first corinthians uh, first corinthians chapter the first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 because that talks directly about um, temptation and sin okay uh, but we use that to say that uh, he's not going to uh let us you know uh put on us more than we can bear but time and time and time and time and time again in the bible we see that he keeps uh you know uh putting his people go through something more than they can bear because only in those situations can he prove himself god if we, everything was fine in our lives we wouldn't need a god if we if we are not pushed if our backs are not pushed to the red sea we will never know that he can part the red sea isn't it yeah if and we see that time and time again guys uh if uh, if 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 the israelites were not uh, if they did not go uh, thirsty uh, in the desert we, they would have never known that they could, that this god can bring water out of a rock or turn the bitter waters into sweet by just throwing uh, you know a stem of of a plant into the into the river Uh, and etc 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 like that yes and i'm sure you there are things in your own life that you can turn back and uh, and see that hey if this is not you know if god did had not come through is no way that this 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 would have been possible in my life right um in matthew 14 13 to 21 you don't have to turn in there but that's the passage about uh, you know jesus feeding the 5000 that's just one of the examples that i put in there is that uh you know disciples thought okay you know at the towards the end of the session um jesus said oh, you know what do we do it's lunch time now we don't have any food it's best jesus to send these people away and the jesus is like hey you feed them what is he doing <laughs> he's putting more than they can bear isn't it uh but what they do is that is that they they go back to him with what they have um so i mean that's i'm come to the end of this point of my my points here is that first thing yes we are interrupted you, you know your your lives um have been interrupted by this but god has a purpose i want to encourage you with that he has a purpose he already has a plan in place okay he's already there in your tomorrow Uh, i love the song um it's a pretty classic uh, it's a through it all through it all i learned to trust in jesus i learned to trust in god you know what i'm talking about andre crouch i've learned to depend upon his word man yeah so in this interruption uh depend on his word know that he is there in your tomorrow uh he already has a plan his plan is redemption everything that you think you've lost this year he's going to redeem it everything that the locust has stolen he's going to redeem it in double portion right and uh and it may seem that it's too much to bear it may seem it may not i don't know it depends on the individual but i want you to know that the god of impossibilities is with you um that is that is it and there's nothing more to add to it yeah um so at this moment i just want us to you know pause um and uh just spend some uh short time in uh in 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 worship jerry if you're ready um 
whenever you're ready. Um, just, just fix your eyes up here for some time. Um, yeah, Jerry, go ahead. So, just, so we're just gonna sing these words, and um, soon as we sing, then you can just um, just meditate on it, and we're just gonna declare it over what whatever's going through in our lives. So here we go. He was the enemy meant for evil. He turned it for our good. He turned it for our good. For your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good. For your glory. Even with the enemy meant for evil, turning for our good, turning for our good, for your glory. Even with the enemy faithful, you're working for our good, you're working for our good. Want to sing that again? Oh, yeah. Even what the enemy meant for evil, turn it for our good. Turn it for our good, for your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good. Your plan to prosper. You have not forgotten us. Your intercession is the fire and the blood. You are, you are, you are faithful forever. Perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Your plans are still, your plans are still prosper. You have not forgotten us. Your is the sin in the fire and the blood. Oh, your faithful forever. Perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. You are, you are sovereign over us. Love. You are so beautiful. Yes, Father, uh, that's, that is what you do. Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good, Lord. You turn it. Good. Everything that he interrupts our lives with Jesus, with his plans, with his schemes, Jesus, uh, with his weapons that is formed against us, Lord, you turn it for our good, Jesus. So I want to declare that over us right now, um, all you young people who are watching, um, even what the enemy means for evil, he's more than capable of turning it for your good. I declare that over you. Everything that you think, every if you feel that you, this year seems wasted, uh, you've lost a year or whatever it is, you've lost business, you've lost your clients, you've lost whatever it is, whatever the locust has stolen, God is more than capable enough to redeem them all because he is a redeemer. He's also a restorer. Amen. 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 So, Father, we thank you for, for sustaining us this year, Lord. We thank you, uh, Jesus, for your faithfulness over our lives, Father. Thank you, Father. We just want to pause and say thank you. I want to thank you for the families that you've sustained, uh, Jesus. Be, we lift them up to you. We surrender those who've lost their jobs, who are without any income, Jesus. You've sustained them. You've provided for them, Jesus. And I pray that there will be a breakthrough, Father. 
Let there be a breakthrough in their lives, Jesus, in every single person, every single family's lives, Jesus, whose lives have been affected by this pandemic, Lord. Lord, I pray that there would be a breakthrough. I pray that you would pour out, that you would open wide the windows of heaven and pray that you would pour out your divine favor over these people right now, Jesus, over our loved one. I'm praying over every single person who is listening and if their family or if their loved one, Jesus, have been affected by this pandemic, Father. Lord, I pray that there would be a breakthrough, that there be a divine favor, Jesus. Let them find favor in the eyes of man, I pray, Father. Let there be supernatural provision, supernatural healing, Jesus. Let there be a supernatural breakthrough, Father, because we know that you are the God of miracles, Father. Lord, you are more than capable to part the Red Sea, Jesus, when our back are against the wall, Father. When the enemy is on the other side attacking us, Jesus, you make a way, Father. In the wilderness, you make a way. You provide for us in the wilderness, Jesus. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in advance for, for the days of gladness and rejoicing that have already begun, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Everybody, so uh, I want to thank you all, uh, you know, for being a part of this journey this year, uh, you know, for attending our weekly sessions. Uh, you know, uh, God's been faithful. Um, and um, yeah, thank you. And um, the next month is gonna get busier, so which is one of the reasons why we will not be able to continue. Wish we could do something about it. Um, but if there's something comes up, if, if I have that oh, idea moment, we'll see what we can do. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, have a have a lovely holidays. Um, stay safe. Okay, I we will keep in touch and. Uh, we will uh, get started next year with this whole thing. Okay. Um, thanks, guys. That's about it. Guys, okay, take care.